a very warm welcome to today's online service. I'm Stephen and this is my wife Shahana and we're part of the leadership team of senior pastors Wes and Adriana Richards at King's Church International in Windsor. And it's our privilege to give a very special welcome to all of you from King's Church International in Windsor, in London and in Robertson, South Africa, as well as to everyone joining us from around the UK and other nations across the world. Today we continue our new series on how to live a blessed life. Jesus not only came to bring blessings and remove curses, but he also showed us how we can have a blessed life. In his teachings on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spoke of a very different way to receiving blessings than many may imagine. One of our fellow team members, Ed Turkington, will explain more of the focuses on the second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. All over the world, so many people need comfort in so many ways. And tomorrow, October the 10th, is World Mental Health Day, where there'll be a focus on the awareness of the need for wholeness in all areas of our lives. And in our features today, we will hear some, from some of the church members in South Africa, in the UK as well, about their experiences of God helping them through personal times of difficulty. And we'll focus on some of the Christian stories about how Christians throughout history have been comforted by God in their darkest times. So there's a lot coming up to help and encourage everyone. But first, let's take a moment to just bow our heads and pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for today's online service and for the opportunity to join together from around the world. Thank you that your love for each of one of us is unconditional. And you have plans to help and bless each person no matter what they are going through. Lord, please speak powerfully through your word today and help each one of us be comforted when we are sad and to know that you are always with us. We pray this in your name. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now let's worship the Lord together. Amen. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled when striving cease my comforter all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness. There 
Verses 3 to 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. John 16, verse 22, and to verse 24. So with you, now is your time of grief, and I will see you again, and you will rejoice. 
and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. 2 Corinthians 1, 5 to 7. For just as we share in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope in you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. Psalm 23 verse 4 even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Psalms 86 verse 17 Give me a sign of your goodness, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame for you, Lord. Have helped me and comforted me. All through history, the Christian church has been sustained by knowing the comfort of God. Right from the New Testament writings of the Apostle Paul to modern times, countless Christians have testified to the reality of God's comfort in their darkest times. John Bunyan was a 17th century English writer and preacher. In the persecution of non-conformist, biblical-based Christians, Bedford-based Bunyan was arrested and spent the next 12 years in prison because he refused to give up preaching. During this time, he wrote a spiritual autobiography, Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, and began work on his most famous book, The Pilgrim's Progress, which became one of the most published books in the English language. It was in his hard prison experiences that Bunyan discovered the comfort of God. He wrote, in times of affliction, we commonly meet with the sweetest experiences of the love of God. In 1665, he wrote a poem called Prison Meditations Directed to the Heart of Suffering Saints and Reigning Sinners, which contain these lines. I am indeed in prison now, in body, but my mind is free to study Christ, and how unto me he is kind. For though men keep my outward man, Within their locks and bars, yet by the faith of Christ I can mount higher than the stars. The great preacher of Victorian times, C.H. Spurgeon, who personally experienced depression and many setbacks, wrote, You may readily judge whether you are child of God or hypocrite by seeing in what direction your soul turns in seasons of severe trial. The hypocrite flies to the world and finds sorts of comfort out there. But the child of God runs to the Father and expects only a consolation from the Lord's hand. In the 20th century, evangelist Billy Graham said of the need of comfort when you lose a loved one. Grief is like going through a tunnel and sometimes we wonder if we'll ever come out the other end. But God has not abandoned you. He wants to comfort you and to assure you that he is with you. If there is something we need more than anything else during grief, it is a friend who stands with us, who doesn't leave us. Jesus is that friend. A lady who spoke at Billy Graham's big event was Joni Erickson Tadden. Joni lived an active outdoor sporting life until at the age of 17, she dived into shallow water and became a quadriplegic. Paralyzed from the shoulders down, subsequently she experienced anger, depression, suicidal thoughts and religious doubts. However, despite all of this, she discovered God's love and comfort, which she wrote about in her international best-selling book, just one of over 40 books, which have been distributed in many languages. Joni, now aged 73, has appeared in a film on her life and on many famous TV programs. She is also a radio host and founder of Joni and Friends, an organization accelerating Christian ministry in the disability community. This is what she says about God's comfort. You don't have to be alone in your hurt. Comfort is yours. Joy is an option and it's all been made possible by your saviour. He went without comfort so you might have it. He postponed joy so that you might share in it. He is willing to choose isolation so you might never be alone in your hurt and sorrow. This was also the experience of Basilia Schlink, 
a German Christian who opposed Hitler and worked for reconciliation after World War II ended. She said, in the darkest of nights, cling to the assurance that God loves you, that he always has a advice for you, a path that you can tread and a solution to your problem. And you will experience that which you believe. God never disappoints anyone who places his trust in him. Let me end with a quote from our senior pastor, Wes Richards. After the death of his first wife from cancer, the mother of three children, he wrote in Hope in a Future, I believe there is no circumstance that needs separate us from the love of God. When we were at our lowest moments, we found that our joy is, was not over. Far from it, your story is not over either. Hi all, my name is Robert and so many of us in the church have experienced the comfort of God at different times in our lives. Some of us will be sharing about these events in our next feature. For me, nothing can prepare you for the loss of a loved one. Nothing prepared me. Um, and if I didn't have my faith, I really don't know how I would have handled the loss of my dad last October. Um, when I was informed of his cancer back in July 2020, my initial reaction was that of fear. But immediately, this verse from the Bible that says, All glory to God who is able, came into my mind and I was absolutely filled with peace. A sense of peace came over me and comfort. Little did I know that this very verse would carry me throughout the 15 months of treatment and care for my dad, as well as everything else that I had to do uh, with the family and my work. My dad had surgery, which went very well, and the therapies afterwards as well uh, went very well. And we got the all clear by mid-2021, and he was on demand. But things took a drastic turn thereafter when the cancer returned in other parts of his body, and it quickly intensified. During his last few weeks, I hung on to the verse all along, which continued to comfort me. It gave me peace and helped me to carry out what I needed to do to ensure that my dad, my mom, and my family are taken care of practically and spiritually. I was next to my dad when he took his last breath. My mom and I were praying and crying, but we both felt an overwhelming peace and comfort that I cannot put into words. And this is how we felt throughout the funeral and until this day, I still feel the comfort and peace and I give all glory to God who is able to do immeasurable more than we can think or ask. Nothing prepared me for the loss of my dad, but God gave me comfort and peace throughout the difficult time until this day. So last year um, was one of the toughest years I've had to live through. Um, I experienced the passing of my father and um, left a very big gap in the household. but. Through and through, the Lord has filled that gap abundantly and He has been our comfort, He has been our hope giver, He has given us grace and love and my father was the main breadwinner in the house and but the Lord kept on providing and showed that He is the ultimate breadwinner and um, we ought to put our trust in Him and uh, I'm just so grateful for the comfort and the, the love and the just everything he did for us, um, the Lord is good, God is good, and God is amazing. So uh, the Lord has definitely been my comforter, and uh, I'm so grateful to, to, to be able to know such a great and living God. I'm truly blessed. I have experienced many bereavements in my family, my father and son-in-law among them, my father who passed from cancer, and my son-in-law from bleeding on the brain. And this was a very painful time for us, and a shock to myself and my family. However, my faith in God and the strength and support that I received from Pastor Wes and his family and my church friend and family was a great comfort to me and my family through these difficult times. I received great strength and comfort. But ultimately, God is the God of all comfort and I really experienced his presence, his peace and his love through these difficult times. I also found the scriptures, Psalms 30 verse 5, very comforting. Weeping may draw for a night, but joy comes in the morning, and I know I will meet them again one day. Uh, it was a time when uh, I just finished with my wedding. I faced difficult times, 
that sometimes I couldn't sleep at night thinking, worrying about stuff that uh, was out of my control. So I found comfort in God that He always is. All I I remember that God is always with me. That time I was struggling getting a job. My business was down. Also, I had a small business that was down. Also, I was worrying: How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to support my kids? How am I going to pay my rent and my groceries? Then God came to my rescue. He comforted me. He gave me a job, and my business is running again. So I just want to thank the Lord. God is a God of all comfort, even in accidents. I was driving back from Cape Town to Robertson on the 13th of March 2022. It was early that Sunday morning and I came across a buck in the road. Now for people who experienced this before, know you have one or two split seconds or seconds to react to this. And my reaction unfortunately was to pull the car to the right. And as I did this, I tried to regain control of the car by pulling the car to the left. But as I did this, the car started to roll. As I gave, regained um, consciousness or knowing what was going on around me, I climbed out of the car and my cell phone battery was also dead because it was late that morning. So I gathered my things and I started to walk to Robertson. It was about five kilometers um, into town. I needed to report this accident to the police. But God's comfort was upon me. As I was walking to Robertson, I was singing in my heart and singing out loud. And I wasn't afraid. I wasn't baffled that my car was ruined. I was safe and God gave me another chance on this earth. I went to church to thank God that God gave me another chance. He comforted me. I haven't got any bad dreams. I have not got any... Um, um, injuries. I just had a scratch on my arm, but that's it. And I thank God for his comfort in, in that time. I have experienced God's comfort many times in my life through times of bereavement and loss or when going through a dry season when finances are so tight you don't know how you will meet deadlines to pay the bills. Or like Joseph experienced in the Bible, you're simply in the waiting season, waiting for God to fulfill his promise. I have been at the end of my rope, like we heard last week on the first Beatitude, but this is when I have known God personally to come in and comfort me through a simple word of encouragement or a time of worship and personal encounter with God when I have no tears left to cry but resting in the assurance of what his word, the Bible says, when we draw near to him, he will always draw near to us. This verse always brings me an assurance and a comfort that I am not alone and no matter what trial or circumstance I might find myself in, I've known his peace that doesn't make sense. I can stand firm in the knowledge that what it says in Romans 8 verse 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those that love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So for me, no trial, temptation or difficulty in my life is wasted. If it isn't good yet, then God hasn't finished yet. God is good, he knows you, he loves you. And today, through this program and these stories, I believe he wants you to know his comfort in your life today. great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through is finished 
Hi everybody, my name is Ed. I'm one of the leaders here in Windsor in the UK team of Pastor Wes and Adriana. I am so happy today to speak to you on the topic of the second beatitude, which says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This issue of comfort is something that has come to international attention recently. We've seen how the royal family needed comfort, as they, as well as many others, have mourned the death of our dear Queen Elizabeth II. Many also are needing great comfort in the Ukraine and Russia, where so many have suffered and died and are continuing to suffer. Speaking personally, I have also needed comfort after the loss of my dad to cancer in the past year. 
I can still remember the rush of painful emotions on the second day of a family holiday with my parents in Hampshire last August, when early in the morning my mum cried out for help as my dad was suffering a seizure. We did all that we immediately could to care for him, comfort him before an ambulance crew came, checked him and took him off to hospital. And then there were tearful moments and I prayed and God comforted me. He spoke to me, he brought me a sense of his presence. Even though we didn't know what to do, I felt that God was showing us that we should not fear, but make the most of every moment of the time that we had. On that day of sad news for us, and many others in the months that followed, until God finally took my dad home on the 1st of June this year, we have really discovered how God can comfort us. Comfort is a great theme of the Bible. As we heard in a recent message from our senior pastor, God is described as the God of all comfort in 2 Corinthians 1.3. Isaiah 61, which Jesus quoted in part at the start of his earthly ministry, contains these words in the first three verses. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort all who mourn, and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. What great promises are spoken of in these verses. Your broken heart can be healed. You can have joy instead of grieving. You can have a spirit of praise instead of despair. In other words, God can turn around any situation, even when you seem at your lowest. Here in his famous Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives further teaching on this theme of comfort. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Once more, the teaching of Jesus seems the very opposite of what we'd all imagine as a route to happiness. First of all, he said that the poor in spirit, or those who are in desperate need, would know great blessing. And now he declares that in a time of mourning, which is something we would all prefer to avoid, we can actually be blessed. Now, in what ways can this be true? Let's look at this in more detail. First of all, God will comfort those who mourn for their sadness. Clearly, it is not a blessing to suffer grief. Yet the truth is that we can know blessings and comfort as a result of grief and mourning that we would not otherwise know. There are two very practical aspects to this verse. Just think it through. Where there is sadness, firstly, you need to allow yourself to mourn. It's not good to suppress sorrow inside us, or it will, if we don't let it out, it will linger inside us. And there's a relationship aspect too, as well. Those who express their mourning can be comforted by someone. We were designed for this. The comfort of a friend can be a tremendous blessing, but there is no greater comforter than your heavenly father who loves and understands you perfectly. If we turn to God instead of away from God in our time of mourning, we can know great comfort and consolation. As Psalm 34 verse 18 puts it, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And in the message translation of Matthew 5, 4, it puts it this way, you're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. This has been my personal experience, both in grief and in times of ill health. It was also the experience of a Chicago businessman who lost his wealth through the great fire of 1871. And then in that same year, his little son died. And not long after, all four of his daughters were lost when their ship sank at sea. Horatio Spafford wrote these moving words in his famous hymn, when peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Jesus came to soothe our troubled souls and to bring comfort to us. Today, if you are in inner pain and turmoil and you don't know how to handle it, then God is near to comfort you if you ask him to. Secondly, we see that God will comfort those who mourn for their sin. The Amplified Translation of Matthew 5.4 renders it like this, blessed or forgiven, refreshed by God's grace, are those who mourn over their sins and repent, 
for they will be comforted when the burden of sin is lifted. The Bible holds out a promise that we can be forgiven our sins and released from the burden of them. But first we have to admit and repent of them. Whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. That's Proverbs 28, 13. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones stated, a real sense of sin must come before there can be the true joy of salvation. He suggested that the overriding reason why many Christians do not experience the great joy of salvation is that they have never really grieved for their sin. So until you recognise and come to a place of mourning for the destructive power of evil and what it's done in your life, you can never experience the comfort of knowing true forgiveness. We see this so clearly in the parable of the prodigal son that Jesus told. Before he came home, he faced up to the mess in his life. He had sinned. He was upset with himself. He knew he'd done wrong. He knew things needed putting right. But it was only when he started to mourn about the condition he was in that he was able to start his journey back into a loving relationship with the Father, with God. The same thing happened in the Old Testament with King David. He had committed adultery and then to cover up what he had done, he had the woman's husband murdered. For a while he carried on in his deception, but eventually he was confronted and he admitted his sin and he faced up to the awfulness of what he'd done. In Psalm 51, he poured out his heart to God. In verses 1 to 3, he admits his need of mercy and cleansing like this. He prayed, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, my sin. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. True repentance means that we come to God and we are grieved for our sin. We're sad and remorseful about the wrong actions and attitudes. Tears are a sign of repentance and of mourning. Today there is a great need for mourning about sin. Too many people try to brush away or excuse their guilt and their shame. But it is only the blood of Jesus that can clean us from sin. And that cleansing follows true, heartfelt, tear-stained repentance. The good news is that we, when we mourn, we shall be comforted. For when we see our need of being delivered, we will see that Christ is the one who had paid the price of our sin to deliver us. Not only can we have the comfort that our sins have been washed away, freeing us from condemnation in this life, but we can also have the comfort of knowing hope of eternally being in God's presence. We can have the comfort of our heavenly home ahead of us. We can have the blessed hope of life beyond the grave and eternity in heaven when all pain will cease and every tear will be wiped away. And the third thing that we can learn from this beatitude is that God will comfort those who mourn for the state of the church and the state of the world. Mourning is something to be considered not only in terms of personal sadness and sin, but also in respect of the spiritual state of the church and the society around us. Both are, are intertwined. Billy Graham explained that the word mourning is to feel deep sorrow, to show great concern or to deplore some existing wrong. It implies that if we are to live life on the higher plane, then we are to be sensitive, sympathetic, tender-hearted and alert to the needs of others and the world. Billy Graham explained that the opposite of mourning is insensitivity, lack of caring, unconcern, callous indifference. Nehemiah was deeply affected when he heard about the ruin of Jerusalem. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 3, they said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. The broken down state of God's people and the nation deeply affected Nehemiah. This takes a level of maturity. He mourned for the state things were in. 
and this was the starting point for the blessing of seeing the walls of Jerusalem rebuilt. Before the 18th century Great Spiritual Awakening, the great Puritan preacher Thomas Watson stated, As we must mourn for our own sins, so we must lay to heart the sins of others. Mourn for the errors and the blasphemies of the nation. Mourn for the pride of the nation. Mourn for the removing of landmarks. Mourn for the spitting in the face of authority. Mourn that there are so few mourners. As Christians, it is time for us not just to feel sad or helpless, but to rise up and mourn actively, to cry out in intercession for the weak state of the church and the sinful state of the nation. Here are some of the ways that we can learn to mourn if we want to see a new revival. We can mourn for wayward family members, cry out for them. Mourn for the multitudes who don't know Jesus. Joel 3.14 says, Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Mourn over wickedness, being portrayed as goodness. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Whenever Christians truly mourn, comfort will follow. God will see our tears and hear our prayers and grant us success. This is what happened to Nehemiah after he truly prayed. This is what happened in Britain before and in many other places. The Holy Spirit, the great comforter, will come when we are truly grieved and we show this grief with our tears, prayers and sacrificial service. There is great blessing in mourning. Today, whether you mourn because of sadness, because of your sin, or for the sins of others, be assured of this great promise. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let's pray. Firstly, I want to pray for any of you who are grieving right now, whether it's something that's happened recently or long ago, but you're still carrying that grief. Let's pray into that. Father in heaven, thank you that your word says that Weeping may last for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Lord, I want to pray that you would help everybody listening right now to be able to release their, their sorrows to you, their grief to you, to have the, the confidence to, to open up and, and, and release that pain and to speak it out to you. Lord, I pray that a comfort will come on them as they speak out to you what has been weighing them down, that they would feel you carrying their burdens and releasing them. And I pray this would be a new time of comfort for everybody who's going through that, Lord. I pray especially for people that have carried a burden for a long time and not known how to grieve, Lord, that you would bring their release today. Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. And secondly, I want to pray for those of you that are carrying a burden of sin. Maybe you've never known how to say to God that you're sorry and to ask him to forgive you and give you a new start in life. Or maybe there's something that he's bringing to mind right now that you need to say sorry for through this message. Maybe something has come back to your memory and that is the Holy Spirit prompting you. So let's pray into that too. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for sending Jesus to die for us. Thank you that his death on the cross paid a price that we can be forgiven. And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would bring a forgiveness to these people as they speak out. And we say, Father, we are sorry for what we've done wrong. We're sorry for grieving you with our bad attitudes, our words, our actions. We're sorry for hurting others and we ask that you would forgive us. And maybe just repeat these words after me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you that I can be saved. Please come and fill my heart and give me a new life and a new start. In Jesus' name, amen. If it's the first time that you've prayed that, we would love you to get in touch with us, email, phone, um, let us know what's happened in your life so that we can help you through this journey. God bless. Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this man
drowning that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea through it all through it all my eyes are on you through it all through it all it is well through Thank you for joining us today. If you have any prayer requests, please contact us at hello at kcionline.org 
or for more information about our church, please visit our website at kcionline.org. To stay connected with us, please go to kcionline.org forward slash connect. Or if you would like to find out more about giving, please go to kcionline.org forward slash giving. And to listen to all our services, go to kcionline.org forward slash podcast or simply download the KCI app on the App Store. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel of King's Church International and our senior pastors, Wes and Adriana Richards. We welcome you to join us again every Sunday at 5pm UK time. God bless you.